Um, I decided to work with Ole again because, I mean, the work that he's done at Morad was literally um, something that I never expected. I knew that he was going to be great. I know the project was going to be a successful project. I knew that he's going to do uh, an amazing representation of what I was doing or where I came from or what I was trying to achieve. But once his vision came to life, um, that's when you get it. And that's when you realize that I was not Oli and I was not capable of thinking about or seeing things way in the future before they even materialize in real life um, the way he does. When you came to me initially, um, or when you know we started talking about Murad, you really wanted to do something at a different level. You wanted to move out of uh, being a neighborhood restaurant with this new project and and quite honestly elevate his food and reputation I think and at that point I said well you know I do think that that there's the potential for the design to really resonate with what you're doing here but I don't think I've I think you and I spent more time kind of developing the vocabulary of that restaurant than I've had on any other project. Mm -hmm. I mean, we went, to, we went to Morocco for a week, and that was extraordinary, um, and I even remember some of it. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that trip to Morocco was, was unbelievable, because when, when Oli said, I, I need to go to Morocco to see where you came from, and, and, and you know, um, immerse myself into the culture, I, was, I, like, I thought it was a good idea, and we went, and we literally just laughed and ate, and, and we had the vacation. But my God, when we came back, and he put the presentation together, like it seemed to me at that point that he was working the whole time over there. But he just seamlessly, um, you know, threw himself into everything that we were doing, whether we were visiting a little cafe or France or meeting my mom or eating couscous with family members or what have you like he was literally collecting all these ideas that are so traditional and he was like putting them through his 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 prism of of of, of vision that eventually became Murad and even I who lived in Morocco grew up in Morocco would have never seen Morocco that way through that lens. I could have never seen it that way. And it was not until he put it together, put all the pieces together. And you have, you have to have faith in this kind of project. It was such a huge project. It was such a big project that you have to have faith in the person you're working with. And I had the utmost faith, faith in him. Um, but once it came together, it was like, oh my God, I could not even see it that way. Yeah, I think that, you know, what we talked about initially, but I think even before we went to Morocco was that to me, you weren't making Moroccan food. Not that I knew a ton mm -hmm. about Moroccan food, but to me, you were making California food with this Moroccan sensibility, obviously. So the whole tradition of Moroccan cooking and having learned cooking through your grandmother and um, mother, and I, I felt that I didn't want to go to Morocco to like, you know, find a bunch of tile and bring them back. I didn't want to, recreate some sort of traditional Moroccan, Moroccan experience. What I wanted to do was do what you were doing with your food, which is do a modern interpretation through the lens of California of your Moroccan childhood. The way I felt about it when, when we got back from the trip was I had this trajectory of where I came from. It was a linear line. Um, and then Oli came from a different angle. And eventually those two lines crossed and he was able to capture that point where, you know, my upbringing and his vision for where I came from crossed. And I thought that you captured that really well. So if you walk into the, uh, the restaurant, Murat, um, you don't necessarily feel like you walked into a Moroccan palace. But every single design element that you put in there is reminiscent of something in Morocco. And that's what I thought was really beautiful. And I. I I could never have imagined myself, you know, seeing Morocco that way. So you helped me in a way see my own upbringing and my own place, my home, from a different lens, you know, and, and, and that was beautiful. Before we went to Morocco, or we decided to go to Morocco, 
I was extremely hesitant to take Oli to Morocco because my fear was I've seen so many beautiful homes in Morocco, beautiful palaces that felt the same. It's like the, the overcrowding of design with plaster and wood and paint and tile, like every single square inch was occupied by something um, artisanal. So my fear was if he were to go to Morocco, he will pick up on that. And then that will be translated into the design of the restaurant which I didn't want. I mean, I enjoyed going to that super nice restaurant and we saw some really beautiful palaces. I don't think we borrowed very much from any of that, although I, I think there are probably elements that are repeated, like there are certain shapes in Moroccan. There's this sort of, I don't know what you call that shape, but that shape, and um, we, we replicated that. We found a subway grating that had that shape and we used that throughout the space. Most people think it's a custom Moroccan grating. It's not. It's for New York subways. <laughs> yeah. um, and then, uh, and we did. We used some uh, Moroccan tiles, like in the bathrooms. Every toilet room has a different Moroccan tile in it. We did um, some tile, I think a sort of abstracted version of tile on the floor. Yes. And we did inset carpets that were, again, kind of modern interpretations maybe of Moroccan carpet. We use Carrera marble, which is often used throughout Mar Morocco for the bar top. Uh, but I think, you know, honestly, my favorite parts about the interpretation that when I walk into the space, first of all, it's the lighting. The, the quality of the lighting, particularly at the night market, is all these tiny little bulbs. It's almost like candlelight everywhere. And it's very kind of intimate and lively. Uh, and, but the lighting level is very uneven. And so we created these sort of light columns throughout the space, and that's a part of that sequence of spaces yeah. as you walk through. And that, I think, really captures, in part, the feeling of the market, although it's a super abstracted version of it. Uh, we did some acoustic treatment on the ceiling where we took fabric and we just draped it. And that, that of course, also um, recalls some of the tents and other mm -hmm. uh, fabrics that we saw. And then occasionally we did things that I don't really know where they came from. I remember thinking some of the trees and, uh, were incredibly beautiful. Uh, but, you know, the, the interior of 130 New Montgomery is this extraordinary Art Deco building there's no real connection to the outdoors at all and so we, we didn't have a courtyard which every building in Morocco has so okay well we don't get to do a courtyard but I wanted to bring in one natural element and we ended up finding this amazing teak root ball that um, we used as the sort of sculpture as you walk in it, it faces you as you walk in the front door and uh, it's, it's, I don't know, what is it, like 12 feet tall and about 5 feet well, wide? Well, originally it was a lot bigger than that, but they had to cut it. Yeah, but they had to get it into, you know, the, into the container, right? The boat, yeah. yeah. Um, so we used this as a wall, a kind of screen wall, but it, the entire root ball is left untreated, except where it's cut through the stump, where it's cut through the trunk. And that we polished, and it's kind of right at at your sort of head height as you walk in. And it's so funny because everybody goes up and touches it. They rub it. it. It's, like the, it's like the Buddha's yeah. belly, you know. You have to rub it as you walk in for good luck. I do it every time I walk in because I've decided that's important. So the first thing that people will be able to see when they walk into the restaurant is this, you know, free route. And it's the most beautiful thing. Like everybody who walks through the, the restaurant basically takes a picture there. And it's very symbolic as well. Um, and, and to this day, I, I still walk to the door and I literally you cannot not stare at it for a while and see how alive it is. But, but, but to me, the beautiful thing about it was, okay, it's, it's a beautiful piece of wood. Yeah. Anybody could put it on a wall. Everybody, anybody could just use it as a design element in some winery or whatever. Right. But what I thought was really beautiful is when we got it, and we were trying to figure out what to do with it and where to put it. And you had this brilliant idea of taking steel and laser cut it to match the, 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 the curves and everything on the side of the root. We built a frame, or just a plate steel frame around it so that it's incredibly precise. It's like, it's like a laser cut it into a rectangle. And we got it 
a very rough version of that when it came and then we came through and literally with a laser marked it and then and then cut each branch so that it was perfectly yeah. aligned and then we built this plate um, frame around it so it, it really does turn it into a piece of art it's just not a found thing now it's it's got a frame it's um, it honors the root I suppose in a way yeah but what's beautiful is like if you look at it from the side you see the the old root and you see the new steel yeah like in harmony and I, I think that capture what you do best which is take something that is really old and maybe even overlooked by most people and bring it to life by bringing something new to it and marry the two to me that was extraordinary but you see you do that with your food too I, you, I try you take to. you take you know sort of even boring traditional dishes and turn them into something extraordinary that that kind of connection where what you do and what I do became so important in that process and I think that's why uh, not only was Murata success and I think timeless, and I think you're right, it is, I think, one of our most timeless designs. It was just so much fun for us to do. We yeah. just had such a, we had a great time, and, and obviously we've become really good friends. It was through the process of doing the restaurant that we got to know each other, and then of course the trip, well, that was, you know, the start of, as they say, a beautiful friendship. Doesn't that come from Casablanca? Casablanca. <laughs>